Good day everyone, David Paul speaking uh, on the 22nd of January, about 10 to 6 here in London. I'm looking at Fever Tree, uh, and uh, Fever Tree uh, has been trending downwards for the last uh, while, uh, and came off savagely a couple of days ago uh, with a bad trading statement. It's in fact pulled right back uh, to the vector vest valuation. So. Uh, uh, VectorVest program is showing uh, that the share price last night uh, closed at 14.92. We believe it's worth 14.73. It's up a little bit on the day. Uh, the relative value still a, a, a good 1.19. Uh, anything above one is good. Above 1.3 is excellent. The safety and predictability of the earnings very good indeed. But the share is trending down. The RT is a long way below one. And it's on a sell recommendation. Uh, the comfort index, which measures the long-term trend of the share, is also strongly down. So if we were looking at the share, it would certainly be a, a bottom fishing opportunity. I think it's still uh, a lot early. Some of the brokers today are, are, are uh, in fact, intimating that big soda could be in the market to buy fever trees. So let's just have a look at the chart. I pulled up a five-year chart. Uh, of the share and this is the great run and many VectorVest uh, customers had a wonderful run. I didn't get this bit but I got this bit uh, up to here until the VectorVest sell signal which occurred around the £35 level odd and it's trended down so far but uh, I, uh, it has pulled back in what technicians would refer to as a falling wedge. Now that falling wedge is invariably a bullish pattern and this is what attracted my attention to it some weeks ago. As you can see one, two, three, four and this could quite easily be the fifth wave of that falling wedge. Uh, it's gone below uh, the trend line defining the wedge and that's not uncommon in a wedge like pattern and the old traders on the floor in Chicago that taught me in this pattern uh, who traded on a five minute chart used to call when it broke the lower uh, line defining the wedge they would call that the sweet spot so uh, there could be a very low risk trade uh, at hand if you've got the stomach uh, for in fact uh, trying to buy at the point of maximum pessimism. Uh, let's have a look at the value. There was the value of the share and it was a glamour stock for a long time rising strongly well away from the vector vest valuation. Let's make that a bit thicker so you can see it. Uh, and uh, in this final, uh, in the sell-off plus the final route of a couple of days ago it pulled back to exactly the vector vest valuation. All right so let's just have a look at uh, the daily chart over a few weeks. Now when I looked at this a few weeks ago uh, I, I, I wanted uh, some confirmation of the wedge and certainly I would have been uh, thinking of buying somewhere up around these levels when the market in fact broke up here and made a rising bottom. Uh, so I, I was thinking of uh, taking uh, a uh, bottom feeding type uh, opportunity somewhere if the share in fact traded above uh, 22, 23 pounds of that level. That didn't happen so I, I, I in fact didn't uh, lose any money in this. Uh, Mr. Gann, who's a mentor of mine, uh, he died a long time ago, he said in a book called How to Make Money in Commodities that the safest place to buy was after the first rising bottom and the safest place to sell if you're prepared to short a stock is after the first falling top and uh, as we can see uh, there is uh, uh, that if this had broken this old high that would have confirmed the first rising bottom it didn't do it here it certainly didn't do it here so now we've got a, a weight in our hands for this uh, bottom uh, to be confirmed if there's a buyout it'll fly up uh, but uh, if it's a, a, a normal uh, technical move, then we would need to see this market, in fact, rise, pull back a little bit and make a, a rising bottom. Now, quite honestly, I apply exactly the same uh, intraday. And there is uh, the um, Dow. Uh, and uh, uh, this is the daily action of the Dow today on a five minute chart. That's VectorVest real time running. And that was the first five minute bar I went up there. It broke up, 
that would have been a rising bottom, but it didn't break this top. And then all of a sudden, it actually made a falling top here because uh, uh, as it broke down through that low, that confirmed that falling top, and I rode this down a little bit. Okay, now, uh, for an entry based on this, and it couldn't be much simpler, could it? Uh, I'll be looking, uh, if uh, it's getting late now, but uh, if this were to pull back and to rise like so, then I'd be interested in buying a breakout there. Mr. Gann uh, told me that the first place to buy is after the best place to buy is after the first rising bottom, and the best place to sell is after the first falling top. So I've tried to illustrate that uh, on what I'll be doing on Fever Tree, and uh, I've tried to illustrate uh, the concepts of uh, waiting for a rising bottom on a five minute chart and uh, in fact profiting from a falling top on a five minute chart. The principles are the same and that was a particularly good one yesterday on the uh, five minute chart as it broke that level that confirmed a falling top. I could have got in a little bit earlier there uh, but uh, I didn't. In fact, I took that. I didn't take it all. I took a bit of it. Uh, so that's what I'm waiting for now. Uh, and uh, that system uh, is called the 123. Uh, it's one of the oldest systems uh, in the stock market uh, and it uh, works uh, and has worked for me for years. There are some nuances in it, but nevertheless, it's a very simple uh, method of trading in any time frame. So if we go back uh, to fever tree I would like to see this rise and I, I'm going to struggle to uh, uh, ri rise then pull back a little bit oh David pull back a little bit and then run up the page if it closes above a high then I would be interested in uh, uh, buying into fever tree uh, on a as a bottom fishing opportunity I hope this helps Thanks very much.